I talked to her. So, Miss Sherelle. Hey. Hey. So. I'm looking up my phone right now. Yes, don't, don't die on us. We don't want you to die while we're talking. Uh-oh, we see Ceiling. Come back, come back. I want to see your face and your duties now. All right. So, Miss Sherelle. I have actually two things that I know you have going on and I want you to talk about them and what actually got you started in them. And one of them is, I know I love you to death and I know that is as a playwright or as an actor, as a drama person, what is that about? I love you to death. Well, I love you to death is a production about a generation of issues that has been hidden, uh, full of secrecy, and eventually things, obviously, the cliche, everything done in the dark comes to light. So we take you on a generational journey about a family that has um, a lot of emotional issues going on, a lot of things that's in their family that uh, people don't know, and they try to hide it. But it follows one young lady, Danielle, follows her life. She said so much in her short life, and she has to kind of figure out how to live her own life. Um, will she live the same life that her parents live, or will she determine her own destiny by doing something different? But the fact of the matter is, you know, you hear the term, uh, home is where the heart is. Yeah. Okay, for home is where the hurt begins. Yes. Just like I'm in my room here, you're in your place, everyone is in their four walls, but outside people can't see you. The same thing happens when you have turmoil within the household. People outside don't see you. So what do we do before we leave the house? We do our hair, put on our hair, uh, makeup, our nice clothes, and we go out and we smile. That's how these generational curses continue year after year, generation after generation, and nobody seems to realize that there's some problems going on. You know, it's just like if you have a bad hair, then you put on a hat. <laughs> you cover it up. If you keep, you cover it up, right? And so I Love You to Death is all about a generational journey of this family that has kept things a secret, covered up certain things. What, what happened at the end? But you, you know what? Find out. Yeah, but you know what I love about what you said? That home is also where the hurt is. Because a lot of times, I can even say that as a parent, you know, of my children, we rush to think that we're being their heroes to save them from everything in the world. But a lot of times, we are paralyzing them because we cause them more hurt because we don't allow them to be free and be themselves because we feel like they're going to get exposed to something yes, well. that is going to be detrimental to them. You know, we try to tell them, well, you can't be that, you can't do this. Those are the things that are wrong with you. You know, we've all labeled all these things that are so worldly that will cause you to sin. But the thing is, if we give them the real direction, like we talked about, the real instruction, the real way of living holy and not being so just so religious, you know, we, we could put these boundaries like you say the four walls we create these four walls that create these these boundaries that have us actually in bondage and then when we get in bondage to these things it is so hurtful because then we're bound then we create the next generation that's bound and we just bound to a whole lot of traditions we bound to a whole lot of foolishness like you say we built this up in our mind we can't go out with our hair looking a certain way we can't go out with our face looking a certain way because we've become so judgmental and then we have all of these Young people who become suicidal, who hurt themselves because they don't fit into even the image of what their own mother, because they looked at them and said, okay, well, you need to do something different because you don't look like so-and-so. You need to wear a dress because this is what everybody else is doing. You know, we don't let our kids kind of like find themselves in the home, you know, because that's supposed to be the opportunity when you're young is have the opportunity to find yourself, you know, to find out what it is you're trying to be. Sometimes, you know, as adults, we're still caught up in our own stuff. Yeah. And when our kids do come to us, it's like, okay, I'll get to it. Yeah, okay, tomorrow I'll get to it. 
Um, mom, someone hurt me at school. Okay, I get to it. Um, uh, uncle, so and so did something to me. Okay, I get to it. And before you know it, yeah, that that suicide. There's so many different topics that we can talk about. It's a lot of things going on with our kids. Yeah. And it's definitely more than an hour show. <laughs> oh yeah. So many things that are holding our generation, our children's generation down. And we just have to figure out the right way to change it. My motto is evoke change. You got to go in there and dig up that stuff that don't look good, feel good, even smell good to get to the root of the real problem so that we can live the lives that we're supposed to live. It's all about our destiny and discovering what we're supposed to do. But the home, that's the meat and potatoes right there. Yeah, and, and I think that's where we've lost a whole lot because we... Um, Yes, the church is supposed to be a sanctuary, but the thing is, we've lost the relationship because originally the original home was Adam and Eve. That was the perfect place, was gar- was the Garden of Eden. Church wasn't created till later on, actually in Scripture, because we're supposed to be the church within us. And if we get that together, because like you said, we just keep piling and piling and piling on. We got a house full of dirty laundry. And all we do is spray a little free breeze on it and say, go on back out in that world, we'll spray a little free breeze on you. But we never deal with the dirty laundry issue that our kids are presenting to us. And then they carry that dirty laundry to the next generation, to the next generation. And then when they come back as adults and tell us, hey, you know, you never helped me with this baggage. You know, I'm still carrying all this dirty laundry. And the first thing we want to tell them is just get over it. Because we busy, we even busier now. And that's the thing. We as parents, we as a society, as home, as church, we got to get outside of those four walls and we really got to help our youth so they don't get caught up in the same cycle we do. And I mean, don't get me wrong, as adults, we need to deal with some serious issues that we got going on too. Because ain't none of us perfect, ain't none of us issue free. But the thing is, we don't need to drag our youth into those same issues just because that's something we're dealing with. Yeah, but guess what? Yeah, a whole lot of people just want to find out what you're dealing with. Yeah, but that's that's why I say your parents should be your first source. The church should be. What if they don't know how? And and that's where we sing. And that's what we sing. It should be a community. We got to break and we got to educate. We got to bring some learning into the environment because it's good that you said that parenting does not come with a book. It does not come with a book. And I mean, of all the books that people write, I don't care how many. If you've ever noticed, they don't write a book through a whole life and tell you, I hadn't seen anybody write a book and say they had a perfect child by using some lesson. They tell you how to create a perfect business. They try to tell you how to create a perfect this. But nobody has ever told, told you how to rear the perfect child. Because the thing is, you have to deal with the emotions. You have to deal with the world. And as we said in the beginning, you know, the scripture that we were basing this on was Psalm 32a, you know, about the teaching and the instruction. The two part component is our actions and our words and that's where we need to as a generation line up that way when our kids come to church and they reach that teenage place they don't see a bunch of hypocrites they don't see a bunch of people judging them and that's the thing that I like about you know I love you to death you're putting it out there you're putting it out there and saying hey this is what's going on in our households give these youth a chance to survive stop giving them more than they can bear. Because the thing is, we put more on them. We put way more on these kids than they should even have to deal with. Let them live a life of youth. Let them have some simplistic things, and it will work. So that kind of leads me into teens, what's the rush? Um, That part of your ministry, tell me what that's about and encourage people how they can participate and help within that. Well, let me just make sure that I really explain what Team West for Rush is. Okay. So, um, a few years ago, my sons came and they said, Mom, Dad, we want to talk about sex. <laughs> and the first thing I said was, why? What's the rush? They're 13 and 14 at the time. They're 19 and 20 now. And uh, at the time, I had a radio show. And so, the next day, we talked about it. Teens and sex, what's the rush? But that night, God woke me up and said, yeah, this is what this is really about. He gave me up pages and pages and pages full of instructions on what to do and what teens, what's the rush really is. He used my sons to bring that to my attention. And that's, it was so needed. Um, 
it's not necessarily one subject. Like I said before, you're talking about sex. You're talking about violence. You're talking about bullying. You're talking about unprotected sex, HIV, AIDS. You're talking about teen domestic violence, um, low self-esteem, suicide. It's so many different things that these kids, when they leave out that door, they're taking a bunch of stuff with them, bags yeah. with them. Mm-hmm. And they go to school, they get a bunch more. In between that time, they get some more stuff. So they're hauling a bunch of mess around with them all day long. And they're trying to figure out how to handle it. And so what they do is they turn to their peers, and that brings up peer pressure, uh, trying to fit in, causing even more issues. So with Teens What's the Rush is we talk to them on a level that they can understand. As adults, we've been there. We've done that, okay? Um, but a lot of us tend to sit up on our high horse and think, Ooh, oh, yeah. I've been there, I've done that. But you better get off that high horse if you want to get to your teens, huh? come to their level and talk in a way that is so non-judgmental that they're being willing to say, you know what, you're not, I've been wanting to talk to you about this. I've been having some issues with my sexuality. Or I've been having some issues with bullying, and I've wanted to lash back out. Or this is why I've been lashing out because I don't know how to deal with certain uh, situations. And until we can take off our grown adult hats, uh, we're not going to get nowhere. It has to start to a, to a point where we have to realize that they do need us, and we, it's our, it's our responsibility to be there for them. Um, and when we first started our organization in 2011, it started with like nine years old, uh, 10 years old, up to 17. Now it is seven and eight years old, it's older, uh, oldest grandparents, great grandparents. Because the generational curses and the generational issues start coming to light once we start having forums and um, the films and the production, they started coming out of the woodwork. Like, I've had issues. We had three generations of molestation in one room um, at a forum at one time, and none of them knew that the other had been molested by the same one family member. Mm. That's deep. Yeah, You're talking about a teenager her mom and her mother's mother. So there's three generations that has been abused sexually and mentally by a family member that's still going to come around the family. Nobody talks about it, and you've wounded these people. So teens, what's the rush? It's not just for teens. And think about it. This grandmother, she was wounded when she was a young person. She didn't give us the exact age, but she was a young person when this happened to her. So we have to now remember that teens grow up, but we grow up with issues that happen in our young lives, our teenage lives. So we don't change the name of teens once the rush because the ages have gone further and further. We have to realize that our great-grandparents had things that happened when they were teenagers that they're still stuck with and still hurting with. And so we have to come and get them out of that mode. We got to evoke the changes within them in order for them to be better for the rest of their life. So it doesn't stop at 19. It doesn't stop at 30. It continues on as long as these um, things that we wanted to bury are there. You You know, if you want to bury something, if you want to forget something, all I gotta do is convince our mind to do it and it's gonna get done. Yeah. And the problem is we've convinced ourselves a lot of times that a lot of hurt, harm, and danger didn't happen. And through the process of convincing ourselves, we really don't become healed. What we do is become we no, we become fake. And that way when it happens again to somebody else, we don't we can't actually relate to it because we buried it. We pretend it didn't happen to us. So now we don't know how to deal with our daughter, our granddaughter, like you said, that three generations when it's happened in a repeated cycle and we allowed it to happen because we didn't speak up. We didn't stop it at the seed and actually tell somebody. So that that fake healing that we got, and that's why I say I call it a fake healing because it, yeah, because it was just we were just burying it. And that's the thing that I like what you're talking about, about teens, what's the rush? It is not about 
like you say, just about sex, but it's about dealing with the things that allow us to grow up to be healthy adults. It's about getting rid of the things that don't allow us to be healthy adults. Because when you were talking about the bags that our teenagers bring in with us, the problem is we don't help them unload those bags. We don't help them unload those bags. The first thing you do... Right in the corner, right? That's right. Yeah, we're busy. We're busy with the world. We're busy with our life. We're busy climbing. We're busy moving. And the thing is, we have to set aside a time... And this is for people who don't have kids themselves. When there's a child that is talking to you in the street, don't assume they always trying to talk about some mess. They just need some advice. They need some direction. If they came to you, that means they're trusting that you'll give them some valuable advice. And that's the thing. You've reached out to people who are not your kids. You reached out to people who are not your parents. You reached out to people who are not your family. You reached out to people who are not even your friends. And you're trying to save the next generation. And when I say next generation, just like you said, it's not that age, but it's the generation that got caught. It's the generation that got caught. They got caught in a teenage mind. They got caught in a teenage hurt. Because there's a lot of times you can go to a woman who's 60, 70 years old, and all they can talk about is something that happened when they were 13 years old. I mean, they caught there. They caught there. They can't get past whatever it is because they really never got to vent it out and express it. So that means they don't have a real relationship with God, even though they show up to church, they do the perfunctionary things, but they really don't have the faith that God can help them get past that. They aren't in healthy relationships with their kids. They aren't in healthy relationships with a spouse. And so what can the people do that's listening to help you do with teens? What's the rush? We are, you know, this this year we're dedicated to the domestic violence and everything that's centered around it. Okay. You know, when it comes to alcoholism and mental abuse, right beside it is a domestic abuse. So it all really ties in hand in hand. What I want them to do is get them um, participating in organizations like ours. Forums are very important. Sitting down, having conversations is very important. If you don't know how to start a conversation, we do. And whether we're um, whether we're over the phone, whether we're in a group, whether we're one on one, let's start by having a conversation. Now, what's so unique about our program is that uh, we teach through the arts. Why? Because when you're part of the solution and not just part of the problem, you're definitely taking a more active role in your own healing. So we can talk about things all day long, but when you pick up a piece of paper and a pencil and start writing your thoughts down, well, I don't know how to write, Ms. Sherelle. Yeah, you do. Tell me what you're feeling right now. Okay, now tell me what you're feeling after you feel that. All right, okay, great. So now tell me three more things you're feeling. And before you know it, we have a good outline. And from that outline, I teach you how to write a paragraph, which is becoming your short story. You're getting it out. Then, okay, our stage productions, you're looking and you're watching the things that's going on in somebody else's life. My daughter is <laughs> This happened in someone else's life um, that relates to your own. And so... Gosh, that looks so familiar to me. And it brings back those feelings and those emotions. Now you're saying, I don't want to live like that. I don't want to be this way. I want my story to end a different way. So it's taking a whole lot, uh, a total different um, feeling, a total different um, thought when you're active and part of it and seeing. Art is your seeing, you're touching, you're feeling. And not just listening. Well, I like what you said. Really, you know, it's, it's a key. You, you yeah. have to be able to be active in it. Well, it's a healthy way to bend. Because they're writing it down, not going out acting on it, being violent. Like you said, they're not being violent toward anybody else. They're not taking any drugs. They're not um, committing suicide. So it's a way to get my emotions out in a creative, healthy way. And that's, that's what we want everybody on the line, whether you're on Facebook, whether you're on the radio. We want you to help you find the youth, a healthy and creative way to get out. Start a forum, start a discussion, get people where they get outside of their emotions and can really get to the root of the issue about what's going on in their lives. Because it is, it's about the root of the issue. A lot of times we look at the artificial things that's going on and we want to buy somebody some new clothes, we want to get them a makeover on the outside. But 
Really? Yeah, because really what need what need a makeover is my heart, my spirit, my soul. You know, those are the things. So y'all realize a lot of times the people who look like they have the most going on are usually a lot of times are the people who actually inside need a, a real makeover. So those are the people that we really need to be reaching out to so that they can get their soul made over. And I don't want to use, lose a next generation. I don't want to lose another generation. I don't want a, another generation to keep the cycle going on. So, I mean, I applaud you, Sherelle, for actually reaching out to people. And I hope everybody that's on the line takes up the next step because it's a mantle for all of us to actually get out and help people to improve themselves. And our youth are going to be the next power. So we don't want a lot of confused, hurt people because one day I'm going to get old and I don't want my kids to be like, I don't know what to do with you want. I, I want them to understand what the next process is, what they're supposed to be doing in life so I can have some fabulous grandkids and some great grandkids because I'm going to be here a long time. But I mean, right. How do you do that, though? You know, yeah. we have to, as parents and as leaders and um, as adults, whether we have biological children or not, we have to be able to come to a point where we have to say, okay, I don't know what to do. Yeah. Ask for help instead of assuming that because your mom told you this is what you do, you do it. Because her mom told her, and obviously we got some problems because we got generational issues still occurring every day. Yeah. Yeah. So we definitely got to um, get the help. Find the resources. And every resource, I think the fear is everybody think resources are so expensive. But the thing is, you invest in a hairdo, you invest in some a coach bag, you invest in some shoes, you invest in an outfit. Why not invest in feeling free and whole? So everything that you invest in, none of that will get you to salvation. None of it will give you freedom. None of it will give you peace. So invest in a little bit of peace. Invest in your child actually finding wholeness. And I mean, I'm, say, I'm, I'm talking to myself. I got kids, and I mean, I don't have no little children now. Let me get that correct. My child can return 18. But the thing is, I want her to live whole. I don't want her to have little bitty specks of brokenness in her life. So whatever it is to invest in that portion, we all need to be about that business. I'm going to... um. Uh, this song that's coming on is about Aaron and Amanda. It's about restore me. And the, it was a line in that um, song that really caught me when I heard it. It says, I need your grace, I need your mercy, and I need your love. And the thing is, we don't need that just from God. We need that same type of grace, mercy, and love from the people who call themselves our family, that we go home and be within that shelter with them. So we need to learn how to show that same type of grace, mercy, and love. We're going to roll into that song by Aaron and then Amanda, and then we're going to come back to Miss Sherelle, and we're going to talk about a few more things. So y'all don't leave us. Stay here on the lines, wherever you all are, via Facebook, however you're connected.